Hello? Can you hear me now? Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, I just said welcome everyone again. <laughs> I hope you are um, you're having a, a good day so far. Today is Friday. We don't have any major significant news events in the market. And uh, the only, only thing we have is to see um, what's going to happen today based on the, uh, on the news we had on the weekend. Uh, sorry, with the news we had on the weekend, I'm saying. The news we had the previous day, especially on Wednesday with the FOMC minutes. Just to scroll down a little bit to get uh, the idea of the markets, the majors, there are pretty um, pretty bullish the Australian dollar from the major since the Asian session. Uh, moving on to the Japanese yen currency pairs. You can see here, but why you don't see them? Yep. I thought you could see the, the pairs on the right. Okay, so the first one, let's start with the euro. Uh, euro against the US dollar and what happened yesterday actually is that the price created this bearish um, uh, this bearish move uh, during the during the New York session actually the market went downwards and retraced all the move it uh, created earlier. So, price rejected the 50 period moving average and that bearish engulfing block order that I showed you some, um, some days ago was a good, a good and a solid one and helped to push the price lower. So, from today, we do expect to see some more push to the downside. Next one, USD Canadian dollar. Remember, guys, I gave you this kind of setups here. Um, I told you up on a price action, I will go with a buy limit order with this one uh, at this region here because we spot it from the hourly chart during our analysis. You guys see that? Did anyone take trade here? At this point, around the 1.3447. Four, so anyway, from this point, we are uh, looking for some for some more continuation. The market is not in a sequence here. It's not in a trending mode, at least on the higher time frames. If you go down to the five minute chart, maybe you can spot some. Okay, here it's a downtrend on the five minute chart uh, consolidation here maybe the price will break to the upside who knows so let's let's wait and see what's going to happen back to the daily charts uh, pound us dollar guys i marked this area of resistance here on the hourly time frame the price surpasses this area uh, we explained that the first time, and you guys need to understand, when you trade the, the bearish um, engulfing blocks, at this point here, the price tested the block and it moved below. It failed to make a lower low. And that's the significant information here. Price failed to make a lower low. So this move from point A here to point B, let's say, at the 50 period moving average, it was what the market gave after it, the price entered into this uh, bearish engulfing block. From this point here, though, moving upwards, now we don't look, we don't continue looking to trade from this block. It's done. We want to trade the blocks only on the first touch, and that's it. Afterwards, we leave them. We don't get involved anymore with this block then price moves upward breaks outside it come back we don't care doesn't matter 
Maybe there is another blog on the on the left. Uh, guys, I would like you to learn this in trading and uh, and apply it in trading. A trade that was never planned is not a trade that uh, that missed. So when you blame yourself that you missed the trade, if you haven't planned the trade, you didn't miss the trade. But if you plan the trade and you didn't execute the trade, then you can say that uh, you missed the trade. Okay. But if you didn't plan for the trade, then you didn't miss it. Okay. Any questions about this one? Um, VSA, hello from Indonesia. Oh, you are in a beautiful, beautiful country over there. One of my favorites, actually. <laughs> BD said, listen every day. NL said, hey, hello, welcome, guys, welcome. So, continuing with, uh, with this one here, the price created on, on the hourly time frame another order block. It's this one here. Okay, but if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna trade order blocks, if you're gonna spot the order blocks on the hourly time frame, and that's the time frame you do your analysis, then you definitely need to go down to maybe 15 minutes or five minutes for execution, guys. All right. So you don't want to do your analysis on the hourly time frame to spot the order blocks on the hourly time frame and then you go and then you execute on the hourly time frame okay you want to take trades on some time frames that they are lower time frames in duration than the time frame you are doing your analysis excuse me and the reason is the order blocks uh, founded on any time frame they are uh, they can be used if we scroll down on lower time frames to enter on a more advantaged price okay so we can use that in our benefit why not um, that's actually that's that's a reason we um, we want to scroll down to lower time frames okay guys so in this particular one here, here it's an hourly, it was the hourly order block from there. And we scroll down on the 15 minute chart and we find this order block here. From then, what can we do if we go even down to the five minute chart? This, um, the move started somewhere, yeah, somewhere at this point. A bearish and gothic candle been retraced and then it changed all this stuff here. So for me, if you ask me to take some trades here, I will have marked this area. That's all. So how many pips from here to there? About 14, 13, 14 pips plus some spread plus some room for error. Let's say somewhere around 20 pips stop loss. And if you go down back to the hourly time frame that's how it looks this area here okay but to trade this one you must be consistent if you're not consistent trading this kind of setup then you better not to trade for example myself here at market Minds mastery the way we trade and the way we teach is we do our analysis on um, let's say we plot the support and resistance on the weekly time frames and monthly time frames just to map the market where the highest probability for the price to reverse. As you see, the uh, all all lines on my chart they have names. Either it's a monthly or it's a weekly. Um, it's going to be there named, so we don't need to visit the weekly and monthly chart during the trading days then on the i do this on the weekend then on the daily 
I spot the order blocks and I go down straight from the daily to the hourly time frame to find this to, to better uh, to refine the order block. So, and um, yeah, that's how we usually do it. With this one here, it was about 20 pip stop loss and 2 to 1 was a good trade um, to take. Okay. So moving uh, forward, USD and the Japanese yen on the daily chart. We started from Monday. Monday the price was here and we were looking for bullish opportunities and we said if the price is going to uh, come down to this area, I have an alert around 149.5 and then I had another alert around 149. Uh, Japanese yens against the US dollar to refine the order blocks here but the price never came down it continues moving upward so I didn't get involved with any one of, uh, of these okay uh, if you were on the hourly time frame and you were doing your analysis you would find a bunch of different uh, entries and uh, the next one great british pound against the japanese yen a solid and robust move to the upside by the great british pound now we have to go back to the weekly charts to find where are the new levels of resistance so if price continue moving upwards here it's the one and how many pips from this point 80 pips so here is the other one as well so these are two weekly yeah on the monthly we will find we will spot them easier so both of these areas here are monthly uh, resistance so monthly resistance this one, monthly resistance that one and this one also then we go we can go down to the daily chart and now as we have our levels in play we understand what our capacities are so at this point there is uh, looks like uninterrupted and uninterrupted room for the price to move upwards we are around 190 japanese yen and we want to go about 500 pips above it but the price might gonna do it in a wavy or cyclical environment so if we will decide to trade the daily trend now we have a confirmation by the market makes higher highs and higher lows we can draw a trend line perhaps that's that's a bit of a steep trend line i prefer trend like something like this so now price makes higher highs if we go down to the hourly time frame um, there is an order block created here and then uh, the market bounced from this point here now the most recent one it's let's say this one here if you want to trade this one guys on the pound jpy and uh, we but this one here because we spot it on the hourly time frame and uh, it's not from the daily chart then it's better to be traded with um, more attention on the lower time frame like five minute chart so if the price retraced back to this five minute region wait for some kind of confirmation before you enter long now why don't we don't we uh, need to wait for this kind of confirmations on the hourly time frame when i trade the the order blocks there it's because i take the daily order block i don't trade the hourly order blocks and that's a key uh, uh, thing to understand guys when you trade the the engulfing blocks on the that you the 
they are visible on the hourly time frame, then you need the confirmation from the lower time frames because on the lower time frames the price will uh, sorry on the on the hourly chart because it's an intraday time frame the market can become volatile or fluctuate a lot but when you find the robust order block on a daily chart and you refine this on the hourly time frame it's it's like you are trading the daily chart with the stop loss according to daily highs and low but you execute on the lower time frame so it's time frame correlation strategy actually okay i i did a very nice webinar on time frame correlation uh, for the trading pit prop firm so you can uh, watch it on the youtube australian dollar japanese yen still moving upwards um Swiss now here it's worth to look at some indicators price is at resistance look at these guys price makes price make this equal highs and the MACD makes lower highs so that's a that's an indication that this market my gonna uh, move lower a little bit a pin bar created at this point here uh, it's not really a shooting star so if we take that this is a boundary of the price go down to a lower time frame so here it's the here it's the daily here it's the daily chart entry using one hour bearish engulfing block so if the price comes up here if you want to check on the 30 minute chart it's exactly the same candle so if the price comes up here i will might use the half of this one to enter long to enter short with about 30 pips stop loss okay so this is um this is how we trade uh this type of of stuff all right now just to make it clear someone says i only believe technical analysis guys i'm a certified technical analyst and uh, what i explain you here it's uh it's it's accurate information um some people they rename the bearish and golfing uh, setups as order block bearish order block the bullish and golfing some like bullish order blocks and all this stuff the most important thing is to understand how you can trade using technical analysis if you are a systematic trader and you're using bots then definitely you need the price to bounce of moving average because you give orders to the to the bot but if you are a trader that uses price action setups you must at some point pay attention to what this price action means for the market for you it means that sellers to control but for the market it means that an insane amount of volume got exchanged somewhere at this point here and usually somewhere in the middle of this one because if you apply some volume analysis on the future not on the currency pairs but on the futures euro future uh, pound future swiss future japanesian future you will understand what uh, you will confirm what i'm saying here so and every time we said that in technical analysis we always teach that price moves in cycles in a cyclical environment so uh, once we identify that the market made a new lower low for example we can use the limit orders to enter short from an area that it's going to give us small stop loss placement from the entry point okay and that's that's the best thing to to use in trading now uh, moving forward So we covered the majors, we covered the most tradable Japanese yen currency pairs. Gold, gold, gold. What happened with the gold? On the daily chart yesterday, 
price still remain below the weekly resistance and um, on the hourly another bearish engulfing here at this area of uh, started from this bearish engulfing down here so this bearish engulfing block hold with a false breakout here but maybe the market will continue moving uh, lower afterwards we will have we will find it out right so far it looks like that sellers are taking control and uh, the last one before we end our webinar actually we're going to analyze also the, the DAX and the last one is the US oil on the daily chart what happened price is still below the monthly resistance this is a monthly resistance guys and uh, the price is uh, the price got again a false breakout yesterday uh, on the hourly time frame entries were only one entry here let's say around this uh, area of uh, consolidation by the price at this point but for me again once the price this bearish engulfing here created all this move to the downside then the price reaches this bearish engulfing and it moved lower it created a new low so automatically this area here it has been tested and is not uh, valid anymore for other tests so at this point here i wasn't looking to trade short to be honest now this uh, nice long bullish candles they show that the market it might gonna move to the upside so i will be ready for some breakouts here if the price will come back to this area i will definitely looking to go long at this point okay so you can uh, add it in your watch list and the last one yeah of course S&P 500 and uh, it's moving again upwards all time high the US 100 or the Nasdaq found some resistance here but we expect a solid and robust move to the upside and the DAX the DAX what happened with the DAX uh, again the DAX surprised us it surpassed and closed solid above the 200% Fibonacci extension that's the one we gave for target so because guys when there is uh, when the market makes an all-time high you can use the fibonacci extension to predict your target points okay because we don't have any reference uh, for the resistance static resistance horizontal resistance guys uh, that's all from me from market nice mastery it was again a privilege and honor to host this webinar for you Thank you very much for your support. Daisy said, solid analysis. Appreciate the clarity. You are very welcome, Daisy. And of course, everyone else, I look forward to see you again on, uh, on our webinars. There is, um, uh, on Monday, I will be a bit uh, busy and out of the office, so I will not host the webinar on Monday, but we're going to be back on Tuesday, of course, at the same time, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to wish to everyone to have a fantastic day ahead. Enjoy your weekend, get some rest, and we will be back on charts live from next Tuesday onward. Thank you very much and have a nice day, everyone.